This time I've got a Sony CCD TR33 Handycam. This one's got a strange problem. It was sent in from a viewer up in none of it. And his complaint was it won't load the tape. But as you're going to see, when I tested it, it loaded the tape fine. It just won't rewind. But they're both caused by the same problem. I'm going to show you guys how to fix it. I received the box from Northern Canada from none of it today to uh, look at. Let's just see what uh, has arrived. What did we get? And it says Sony. It has a little 8mm tape in it. And I received a camcorder. This one's a CCD TR33. This one's obviously in for repair. So let's uh, check it out. See if we can get this one to work. I always remove the hand strap because it gets in the way. We'll put that back in the box so that it goes back with the camera when it's repaired. So I got a power adapter. This is one of the six volt adapters it clips on the back just like that. We'll first see what the symptom is on the camera. Power it up. Got the AV plugs. So first things first, let's see whether the camera itself turns on. power supply in the correct mode camera I have a picture from the camera and noise and the color LCD viewfinder is functional okay so the camera portion works let's put this into playback We'll open it. This is an A mechanism. You can tell by the by the uh, the transport. Here's his tape. I'm going to try his tape. I'm not going to show you his tape, but let's just see. Let's observe what it does when I try to load the tape. We're going to listen for any unusual sounds. Okay, tape seemed to thread okay. I don't hear any unusual sounds. Let's see what happens when I try to play it. What I'm seeing here is a very washed out picture. I'm going to try it with one of my tapes, which I know is, is good. As I want to know, want to see what a known good recording looks like. I'm just going to rewind my tape as my tape is near the end. Let's just see if it will rewind. Ah! So it's going into shutdown when I try to rewind the tape. Ah, maybe that's the problem. And I have an eject symbol on the screen. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but there's a little flashing arrow to eject the tape. So let's uh, open this up. Obviously, we, we do have a we do have a problem because uh, now I won't eject my tape. I've got the still got the the flashing symbol. So we'll just turn the camera off, turn it back on, and see whether I can eject the tape this time. So the tape ejected is not eating the tape, which is a good sign, but it's definitely not rewinding. So, first things first, 
let's uh, open the camera up and see if we can see anything that is uh, wrong with it on the uh, mechanical side first. At this point of the game, I already know what the problem is, but I'm going to keep you guys in suspense for a few minutes. So I'll grab my... I guess I could use my my little new Carter screwdriver. Well, first, open up the cassette. Remove the cassette door. I'm going to remove the battery from it here, remove the power supply. We'll open up the side of the camera first. I want to observe what's going on on this one. This could be a sensor problem. I'm, I'm thinking right now it's a sensor problem. And it's probably the uh, interconnect cable between the um, main board and the chassis, more than likely. This is the problem that we've seen countless times on countless different models and it seems to be a problem that just keeps happening over and over again okay I just let the cat out of the bag as to what I think the problem is let's see if I'm right what happens it's quite windy out today which is nice for a change I don't know if you can hear the wind but it's only 21 degrees here today. It's, it's actually quite nice, nice day to work in the uh, in the shop here, because last week it was just too just too hot. Anyway, I'm I'm being sidetracked here. What happens on all of these cameras? It doesn't matter. A mechanism, B mechanism. Um, the newer ones, I don't even know the model or don't even know the chassis number on the newer ones. But uh, it's the ones that the shell opens from the bottom and the tape drops out. The last one I fixed was one. I don't know the chassis. Don't ask me because I don't know it. Um, that one came out after I left the business. But uh, what happens on all of these units is they all suffer from the same, the same problem. And once I get this apart, we'll we'll go into that problem. The screw is out, it's just sticking. Magnetic, it's a magnetic screwdriver, but the screw itself is not uh, stuck on something. There we go. Okay, now I could remove the front cover. Unplug it up here, the audio connector. Remove the side cover for the camera. I got all the screws out. That one does not have his uh, arrow with it, so it should just lift out here. Carefully remove the, the viewfinder and the, the blue flex cable. The blue flex cable is for the controls and this one here is for the viewfinder. And this one here requires removing the little zip connector on it, otherwise you'll damage the, the ribbon. What happens on all of these cameras? It's such a common problem. It's ridiculous, but it was an ongoing problem that Sony had and it affected so many models of camcorder. I, I, it, it affected, this is the A mechanism, so all the cameras that use this mechanism, the B mechanism followed, it had a similar problem, and I'd say the, the later models, they all had the same problem. What happens on these is connectors, edge connectors go bad. 
the edge connectors are right down here on the bottom of the, um, the camcorder. There's plugs and there's these edge connectors. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to unseat this plug. We're going to unseat this edge connector here. We'll take this one right out of the head drum and pull it out of the camera itself. And uh, then I want to unplug the loading motor and I want to unseat this circuit board. So I pull the circuit board out just like that. It has a couple connectors on it that plug into the main board. Okay, I don't need to worry too much about that one. That's the capstan motor. If I, if I really wanted to, I could unseat that one and reseat it. But usually just moving it a little bit one way or the other and then pushing it back in will be suffice for this. Okay, where the big problem is on these ones is these connectors along here. This one in particular, which which plugs into this connector right there. We always inspect this plug to see if there's any see if there's any liquid damage on it because it's been on the bottom. If there's any liquid damage, it'll typically show up on here and this one does look like it's got some liquid damage you can see between the pins so we're going to clean this one up you can see right on the edge here you see it's green that's an indication that liquid has entered this and it's it can short out the pins now what happens on these cameras if they get wet I'm just looking at these connectors here, these pins as well. That board looks okay there, it looks like. What happens is this connector down here on this, this edge connector, this is connected to the switches under the board here like to, to tell the like the, tell the, the camera when the lid is closed it's also connected to these detection switches which tell the camera what type of tape is installed whether it's a an eight millimeter tape or whether it's a high eight tape or whether it's a metal evaporated if we look at a couple of different tapes here you'll see the detection holes that uh, over here and this one over here right and high eight tape typically has extra holes punched on the other side this is a high eight tape this other one's a, a regular tape but high eight tape has an extra hole punched that the standard tape does not i believe that tape there that one there i've punched it because i used to use yeah see here's a here's a regular eight millimeter tape you see the detection hole is, is, is closed there, but on this one here, this detection hole is open. That's the difference between a standard eight and a high eight tape. And what I used to do when I wanted to use a regular tape like this on a digital eight machine, and I wanted to be able to use the LP recording speed, because on digital eight, you could use an eight millimeter tape, but you were limited to the SP speed. But if you used a high eight tape, you could use the LP speed. So I used to punch that hole, you can see where I've broken it off there. You used to punch that hole in, and that would tell the recorder that hey, this is a high eight tape, even though it wasn't. And you could record high eight on a regular, on a regular tape. You could record high eight, just like you could do the same thing with with Super VHS tapes. You could trick super, trick a regular machine into thinking it was a Super VHS by drilling the little hole. Anyway, where are we going with this? Well, you can see down here, if I point out. There's the ribbon, there's the other end of the ribbon. It comes all the way down to here, right? And it goes onto this little circuit board here which has got these switches on it, but it also has the rotation sensors underneath the real table on both the supply and the take up side. You can see the circuitry down here on the circuit board. So they pass the signals through from the tape hubs back to the microcontroller. And if those signals get interrupted, such as through corrosion on the board 
or just a bad connection, then uh, the unit will go into a standby. It'll go into an emergency shutdown. So let's uh, clean this up a bit and uh, see whether that will fix this problem with this machine not rewinding. So I'm just going to use some isopropanol to clean it up a bit. And I'll use some compressed air to dry so there's no shorts. And then we'll reassemble. Looks like somebody's resoldered this at one time, doesn't it? Okay, I'm just going to go get my air compressor and we're going to blow some air on there and and dry it. And I'll, I'll try not to have the thing take off on me. That happened once when I was drying it. A circuit board, I wasn't hanging on to it. And I hit it with high pressure air and the high pressure air tore it out of my hand. I'm going to just pull that board just to make it easier. Looks like there's been water in this camera is what it looks like. That plug is kind of stuck. Oh yes, there's been other water that's gotten in here. You can see it around here. This connector was kind of stuck. Well, the camera was working, so uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that one just because it was functional. This one's rusted. This screw. This camera has been wet. And I can check to make sure that the chassis screws haven't started to come loose because that, that's quite a common one as these screws come loose up here and then the chassis falls apart. So there's the there's the unit itself torn down. I can actually do this connector on the back here as well. Since I've got the board out, we'll just pop this connector off. Pop that, pop that out. This is for the drum motor and take that one off. And then just put it back on again. That way, if there's any if there's any connections that are kind of questionable, just removing it and reinserting will break any uh, it will break off any oxidation that might be just waiting to act up. So I can reseat this connector again. Close the little gate down. This is the one that I wanted to reinsert. So. Now that I got the, bar, the bottom board off, I easy enough to plug this one back in. Just like that, and then I can place the board back in. Reseat the plugs on the power supply and audio board.
bring back the camera section. Reattach the camera board. There we go. Now because this 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 uh it's evident that this camera has had liquid damage. I would be telling the, the owner, but you know, if I can get it working great, uh, I'm certainly not going to guarantee this thing's going to last any length of time. So I would advise the owner of this one to be sure to get all his recordings transferred over that he needs to because uh, there's just no way of knowing how long something like this is going to run, if, it, if, it, if it'll even run at all. So we put the, put the uh, circuit board back in, re plug in the uh, loading motor and put the screws back in for the circuit board. I got that one. Plug in the audio video output here and we can test this thing. We should be able to test this thing fairly quickly here. See if it'll fast forward and rewind and play my tape before we put it all back together. Reinsert that plug. Reinsert this plug on the bottom. That, uh, plugs into the head. This is the preamp connector. Plugs into the rotary transformer here on the bottom. Actually, it probably wouldn't hurt to just open this one, open this gate here and reseat the actual connector on it. Plug that in there. Plug this into the preamp. And put the grounding screw back in. Uh, was that on this thing? I think it was this way. This goes on like this. Clips down over. And then this, this little piece goes in through here. So that's got to clip down over top. It, it, this little, little slot lines up with a little clip in here. So that goes in like that. that and then one screw grounds the whole shield and the head drum. Okay, I believe I'm ready for power. Let's get my power supply set to a comfortable 24 volts. No, kidding. 6 volts. Make sure we get the polarity correct. Otherwise, we're going to have sparks and smoke, and that would not be good. Still haven't fixed that connector from when I burned it up. They're making that sparks and smoke video. <laughs> I may have to do something with this. this alligator clip. It's, it's seen better days. Okay, my own good tape. Moment of truth. Will it rewind? without shutting down.
And, oh, you know what? I gotta hook this up. The, uh, where's the switch is off on this, I think. Yeah, I gotta plug this in. The switch is uh, connected through here. So we gotta hook the side, the side cover up. And because I need to hook up the side cover, I might as well just use the, the factory power supply. So let's just reconnect the viewfinder. I have to laugh. I should show you guys this thing. For you guys that like to donate a dollar on PayPal. It's hardly worth your effort. Because PayPal takes a good chunk of it. I'll show you guys. This is what I get. I get people to say, here, here's a dollar for all my ad blocking. Um, and I have to laugh because... I get this, uh, I got sent a dollar. It says, I thought I'd send a dollar your way. Thanks for all your efforts that you do for the hobbyist. Right? I'm just trying to block his name so that you don't uh, see his name. So, anyway, here it is. He sent me a dollar. Woo, I got a full 67 cents because PayPal charge a huge fee. And uh, it's like 30 cents plus a percentage so you know I had somebody one time I think they must have been joking because they sent me 50 cents and PayPal took 30 31 of it or 32 of it and the kicker is if I went and refunded this I figured you know a, a buck I, I don't know, I was refunded if I refunded it PayPal would take another 33 cents off of it and he'd get back you know whatever uh, he'd get back like what 33 cents I have to laugh at PayPal. Yes, there's a way to send money that you don't, that no one gets hit. But uh, for the most part, yeah, they, they're they're bandits. They are bandits for the most part. It's, it's uh, hardly worth the while for a small donation like that. Like if someone kicks in five bucks or something, yeah, then I might see if you might see most of it. But uh, yeah, for the, for the transactions that I get, and I get a lot of them, a dollar at a time, it's like it's hardly worthwhile for a buck. It's, uh, well, it isn't worthwhile. The only people making their money on it is PayPal because when I, when, when I withdraw that fund, there's another, there's another charge to withdraw. Another processing charge. And if it was US dollars, they would charge a fee to convert the US dollars to Canadian dollars. Uh, they just, a bunch of bandits, PayPal is. Okay, uh, I should have power now, I think. Do I have power? Yeah, I have power. Okay, will it rewind? Will it rewind? Ah, it's going to rewind. See, that fixed it. I hear a ticking. That's going to be a plastic gear that's got a crack in it, more than likely. Is this going to play back? It is playing back. I'll put the sound on too. I can... Find that a little more. Yeah, here's some of my footage that I shot that I recorded on this tape. Damn tourists, you know? You'd think that they'd shut up when they can see someone's trying to take scenery pictures. They're probably saying in Chinese, look at that cool camera. Man, that thing looks like it weighs a ton. Had like a 30 pound tripod. 
Uh, this thing is working, so we're going to do a, a test recording on it. i got a tape that I can, I think I can record on this tape. Well, at the moment, I don't have a camera picture. It's uh, on camera mode there, and all I have is kind of a, a blank screen. I'm going to pull this thing apart again and just take another look at that, that board where it was connected. To say that, that between the two camera boards there, there was uh, looked like some corrosion, so maybe one of those connectors isn't seated properly. I had a picture when I first when I first plugged it in before pulling it apart. I did have a picture off the camera, so I know it was working. Just make sure that the the plug here is seated properly. This one here, this is where my concern is. Because this is where the camera itself plugs into the main board. Maybe we'll clean this connector off a bit. Or try putting some cleaner in there. Because it looks like it's been a bit corroded. Same with this, looks like there's some corrosion on the board here. So put this other screw in while I'm at it. Little ground screw that goes up here. Ah, good. I have a picture, as you can see. Hello, got a picture again. Okay, that part's fixed. Let me uh, connect the microphone, and uh, we'll test this camera, make sure it records, and then this one should be ready to go home. part on. Okay, yeah, I got the cabinet sort of. I haven't got it all together. I just put a couple screws in just to hold it together while I test it. Audio video cables. Power supply. Power on. I have picture. Do I have sound? Yes, I have sound. Sorry, headphone people. I'm not sorry when I say that. Okay, let's do a test recording. Camera is now turned on. And we are, are we recording? We are recording. Tape is rolling. Zoom in, zoom out. Yep, that works. Show you guys the screen and we'll play this back. 
so there's what I'm recording. I'll wave to you guys. Here, there's there's how you can uh, support my channel. Just don't send a dollar. It's not worth my time. Okay, let's uh, play this back. So let's see, stop and switch it to playback. Rewind the tape and playback. Sound on. Pretty. The tape is rolling. Zoom in, zoom out. Yep, that works. Show you guys the screen and we'll play this back. So there's what I'm recording. I'll wave to you guys. Here, there's, there's how you can uh, support my channel. Just don't send a dollar, it's not worth my time. Okay, let's uh, play this back. So let's see, stop. Oh, that's what was already on the tape. Some of my own stuff that I just recorded on here. Now this is the tape that uh, was sent in with the camera. Now you'll notice it's got some severe tearing in the picture. That's because I believe this was recorded in high 8. It's a high 8 tape that was recorded. And I'm sure if I put this tape into my, my other machine, it'll tell me that it's in high 8. And that's why we're getting a really bad playback of this picture. I'm now playing it back in my old, my original Digital 8, my TRV-110, which has analog playback. And this tape is playing in high 8, and it's playing perfect. As you can see, it is a high 8 tape. So it's playing perfect. So nothing wrong with the tape, but the camera that he shipped in with the tape is a standard 8 camera. So if the fellow that owns this is trying to play this tape back, and he's watching because he is a viewer, your tape is fine. That's nice scenery you got up there. Your tape is fine, it's just that this camera is a standard 8, so if you've got high 8 tapes, you're going to have to find another camera to play them back. Or send them down to me, I can transfer them over for you. Something I just noticed on my little TRV-110, this grip, the rubber is starting to go, starting to get sticky, like, yuck. The grips are going on this one. But hey, this camera is, how old is this camera? 20 years old, I think? It say on here when this was made I think I've had this camera 20 years or more when was this one made does it say there it is January 1999 this was the first digital 8 camera that Sony made this is my TRV 110 you guys have seen this one repaired as this is the one that I changed the the entire chassis on three-part video where I changed the actual chassis because it uh, it cut through the the ribbon cable on the uh, on that ch the slide chassis the ribbon cable gets cut by the latch uh, a sharp edge on it and it would cause it to stop because it severed the trace for the rotation sensor on the take up side so it would not play the real common problem with the B this is the B mechanism chassis so this one here had the guts from another camera that was donated to me, uh, ripped out to replace this one. Now, I don't use it, I just use it for playing back tapes. This is uh, starting to go pretty gross. Okay, time to put the rest of the screws back in. We'll use the fancy screwdriver for this one. Sometimes I think it might be faster just to use the manual screwdriver. What do you guys think? Let's try the manual one. Is the manual one faster than the power driver? Well, there's a manual screwdriver. And we'll use the power driver for the next one. Load it. Drop it in and push the button. Now, power driver's still quicker. And what have I got left? 
that should be three screws remaining. Where do they go? One up top and two to hold the cassette housing. Just the right torque. Okay, one final test. Make sure everything's working before packing this one back in its box and getting it on the long journey home. Just play one of my tapes on here. Check all the modes out, rewind. Here we go. Fast forward. Play. There it is. Good as new. Thanks for watching. And remember, when you see one of these camcorders, the biggest problem with these camcorders is that little circuit board on the bottom the connectors on it that's the biggest problem when you have there's all kinds of strange problems some of the symptoms will go over some of the symptoms but some of the symptoms are well <clears throat> it will open and close when there's no tape in it but when you put in a tape it will just sit there and open it again it will not retract that's one of the symptoms another one when you close it you hear the drum wind up much faster than normal. You'll hear it wind up to like 10,000 RPM and then it'll stop and kick the tape out. That's another problem. Uh, close it, the tape will go down. You go to play it back, you get what looks like dirty heads, but cleaning the heads do nothing because it's the connector that's gone bad. Um, close it down, press play, it runs for a few seconds, stops with an error code in the viewfinder. Um, same with on fast forward, it'll stop. In this case, it was rewind, it would, it would go forward because forward's only monitoring the take up side over here. It's not monitoring the supply side, but when you put it into rewind, it's monitoring the rotation sensor on the supply side. So all of those problems on this type of camcorder can all be traced back to that little circuit board and those connectors on the circuit board. When you see those problems, that's the first place to look. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.